Hey gang, before I get to the next Brandon Sanderson video covering his Mistborn series, I thought I would introduce you really quick to Larry Correa's Monster Hunter International series, since my friend Declan is reviewing them all individually at upstreamreviews.com. So here we go. Now, as you can see, I've got all of the series right here in paperback on my shelf. Um, I started collecting them originally in 2009 when the first one came out with Bane. Originally, Larry had self-published them back when he owned a gun store. And uh, I've just been getting them in paperback ever since. They got a lot more popular right around the time that Alpha came out, the third book. And they've been coming out in hardcover ever since then, but I didn't want to go back and reinvest in those, so I usually just wait until the paperbacks come out. But looking at the whole series stacked up here on my shelf isn't going to do us any good, so let's take a look at them spread out on the drawing board. There we go. They look a lot cooler all spread out like this. Okay, so what is Monster Hunter International? It's basically if you take a, uh, like a B-movie horror flick from the Sci-Fi Channel at 2 a.m., but you add competent characters and give them guns and weapons training and combat experience, what would that look, at, look like? Well, you'd have guys like Owen, our protagonist here, who's really handy with a shotgun and handguns and stuff, collecting bounties on zombies and vampires and so forth. Now, Larry, the author here, is a lifelong gun aficionado. Um, like I said, he owned his own store at one point. He knows all these details. Uh, he knows how to present it correctly and accurately. And uh, you know, there are even times when he gets a little bit uh, too detailed with the ammunition types and stuff. But, you know, that's his audience. That's how he got his start, was writing for other people like him who were really interested in those. And for me, who, you know, isn't as well-versed in these things, it's it's kind of a good crash course, a good lesson in, uh, in firearms and stuff, especially since, you know, I as a writer, I'm going to be writing characters that get into these action situations. And while I'm not going to be writing stuff as detailed as he does, uh, it, it definitely helps me to understand better, you know, the, the stuff that a reader would be looking for in this, uh, in this particular genre. Owen, like I said, he's the main character. In the very first book, he finds out that his boss is a monster and uh, you know, he survives a close encounter with him at work and ends up getting recruited by this private group called Monster Hunter International. They know that monsters are real. There's a government agency called the Monster Control Bureau that issues bounties for these private groups that go around, you know, killing monsters and, and uh, you know, proving like, hey, we got a werewolf, we got a vampire, we got these zombies. There are tables that, you know, show what each bounty is worth, and and uh, it's it's a whole lot of money if you can handle it. Not a lot of people are uh, suited for it, but the ones that are end up making a killing at it. Pun intended. As you can see, the cover art is very high octane, and they deal with big monsters and small monsters alike. Each book kind of focuses on a different character, even though the main focal character is most often Owen. Several of the books are written from other characters' perspectives, though. Usually, if it's first person, it's Owen. If it's third person, it's someone else. So, Owen, Owen. This one is mostly from a character named Earl Harbinger's point of view and gives some of his backstory. Owen. This is a backstory on a character named Frank's, which is awesome. Owen. These two books right here are like a you know 7A and 7B in the series. Maybe 6A and 6B. I could be getting that wrong. Am I missing one? I don't think so. Shouldn't be. Anyway, uh, the reason why is that, uh, you know, Owen and Julie, that's Julie, uh, Owen's wife, um, they get separated for a long stretch in this book. And the second book here shows... Um, you know, what Julie was up to when, when Owen was separated and, and why. This trio right here has an interesting story all on its own. John Ringo is a very accomplished and successful sci-fi author who, uh, if I'm not much mistaken, has actual military experience. I think he was a Marine and you know, he's been writing for Bane since forever. When he finally got around to reading Monster Hunter International, he got so into it that he wrote a story of its own and just sent it to Larry. He's like, hey, I wrote a book in your universe. And Larry, who'd been a big fan of John for a long time, was like, dude, yes, please, let's publish this. And so, you know, worked together with him on it and, uh, you know, made sure that it all fit into the larger universe. This is kind of a prequel series that takes place in the 80s and it has a different focal character. It's all written in first person. Um, probably the biggest difference in style between 
Larry and John is that John writes a lot more um, sensuality, we'll say. The Marines character, literally his name is Chad and he just goes through women like hotcakes. But um, I found that the memoir style of, of this uh, particular trilogy flowed really well and moved really fast and uh, was an interesting change of pace from Owen's perspective, even though, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoy all of the Owen books. This one was, uh, man, I, I burned through each of these once I got them. This last one here, The Monster Hunter Files, is an incredibly successful anthology featuring a bunch of other authors. Um, you know, Jim Butcher, probably the biggest name in urban fantasy, wrote one for it. Uh, you know, these are all stories that fit within the larger Monster Hunter verse and, you know, add extra layers of of depth and color to the timeline and, and to the world at large. Now, I'm not gonna go through the individual plots on each of these, because like I said, my friend Declan is reviewing them all individually over at upstreamreviews.com. That's a website that he and I both contribute to, along with a bunch of other big authors like uh, Travis Corcoran and Rob Cruzy. Rob's actually the one who set it up. Uh, I like that each book takes place in a different setting, even though, you know, the, the base camp for MHI is in Cazador, Alabama. <laughs> Cazador literally means hunter in Spanish. Kind of funny. Um, so while the first one, first two, you know, are mostly in the uh, American Southeast, Vendetta takes us to New Zealand. Alpha takes us to the upper peninsula of Michigan. Legion takes us to my, uh, my hometown. Well, my hometown's really Henderson, but Las Vegas. I remember when Larry was still writing this book, he put out a call on Facebook to his fans. He's like, is there a hotel in Las Vegas that's dragon themed? Because it was relevant for what's going on in the story. And I was like, eh, I mean, the closest you might get is the Excalibur because it's kind of like Merlin, King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table themed. But he ended up having to make up a hotel for it. But yeah, it takes place in, in uh, Las Vegas with some jaunts into rural Nevada, which is just excellent fodder for sci-fi horror fantasy. Um, Nemesis was, like I said, that's the backstory of a character named Franks. Don't want to give anything away because Franks is a really cool character. You get introduced to him in International. You find out more about who, we, who and what he really is in Vendetta. And then he goes rogue in Nemesis and it is excellent to behold. Um, I'm trying to remember a specific place. Um, you know, he, he starts out in Germany. He spent some time in Washington, D.C., but, uh, Beyond that, I really don't want to, to give anything away. Siege takes us into uh, Alaska and eastern Siberia. Um, Guardian, we get to jaunt over to Portugal, which is kind of cool. That's where um, Larry's grandfather is from. Uh, Korea is a Portuguese name. And Sarah Hoyt, I don't know her maiden name, but she grew up in Portugal. So, uh, you know, they they both, well, she knows the setting and, you know, she wanted to... Uh, to take the monster hunters over there for a quick jaunt and for a quick, quick adventure. And then out of these three, grunge takes place mostly in Seattle and then sinners and saints both happen in new Orleans. And, uh, I just kind of take Ringo's word at for it, that that's what those two cities were like in the eighties. But man, it's, it's just, it's just a ton of fun. Um, I will be linking the individual reviews that Declan writes for these. Uh, I know he wrote the one for International a couple of days ago, and then the one for Vendetta just went live at upstreamreviews.com today. So if you want to know more about these individually, if you're a little bit on the fence after this pitch, go ahead and check those out because uh, he's he's a really good hype man. I mean, I, I guess we all are for writing book reviews, but uh, I would highly recommend you go check out Declan Finn's reviews so that you can get as excited about this series as, as all of the uh, decade-long fans are. This series is Larry's bread and butter, but he's written a lot more really, really good ones. I think he's got like 25 bestsellers out right now. The man's an absolute workhorse. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, check back in a couple of days for the next Brandon Sanderson video. Till then, drive safe. See you out there.